part, part three, and this is how to bring in your symbols and code them up to make them interactive. So the first thing I want to do is bring in my uh, closed movie. So I'm just going to pick the movie, not the not one of the uh, stills. I'm going to pick the movie itself. You see it's a little bit different symbol. It looks like a gear. And I'm going to drag it onto the stage. And it's going to be really big. I can shrink it by clicking on my transform tool right here. Make sure it's locked. You want to make sure this deal here is locked so that when you change the size, it will change both of these at once, both the width and the height, and it won't make it all stretchy. Uh, so I can click on here and then scroll it down. Uh, 58, I think, is going to be a good number for this. And then I'm going to, here's my actual stage, right? I'm going to put it in the corner of the stage. I know I'm in the perfect corner when those little white lines appear. And the reason why I want to make sure I'm in the same spot every time is so I can put all four videos in the same spot and it doesn't jump around. So there's the first one ready to go. That's the first symbol. Now if I was to test this right now, it should just play that first movie. So I, if I hit Command Enter, there it is, the first movie. It's just looping. It has a little you know, glitch as it goes from the end to the beginning frame. So there it is, closed hand. Great. So now I want to put in the other three. I'm, going to, I'm just going to put them all on keyframes right next to each other and then can, uh, I'm going to action script which keyframe it's going to sit on and play that movie because the movies themselves are inside the symbols, not on the main timeline. The main timeline is sort of like your controller timeline. So I insert a new symbol, uh, keyframe rather. I insert a new keyframe and then bring in the next symbol. So I'm um, with closed. Um, I think I'm going to, here's the order I'm going to do. I'm going to go closed, open, thumb, finger. I'm just going to go up the hand. Close, open, thumb, finger so I can remember that order. It has a logical sense to it so I don't get lost and forget what button is what and then end up having to recode them. So now I'm going to make, that did the close. Now the next keyframe is going to contain the open video. So I'm going to, on this keyframe, I will delete this closed video. So now I'm, it's only on frame one. On frame two, there is no video now. And I'm going to bring in the open video. Where is that? Uh, there it is, right here. Remember the video, not one of the stills. Bring that in. I'm going to transform it down to 58% of its size and corner it up. Yoink. Oops, that didn't quite there. There we go. Great. So that keyframe now contains that video. Make a new keyframe and then delete that video out of there so nothing exists on that. So I've got uh, frame one has the first video, the close. Frame two has the open video. You can only see the first frame, frame of it. And then now we've got nothing on the third frame. And I want to put my thumb video in there now. So there it is. Drag it in. Great. Shrink it down, 58%. There. And then corner it up. Cool, cool. And then bring in a new keyframe, insert new keyframe, just right clicking on the, the frame. And then get that video out of there and bring in the new one, which is going to be the finger. Finger, finger, finger. Drag it in. Shrink it down corner it up. Done. So now if I was to scrub this right now, we're just going to see the first frame of each movie. Cool. I'm going to lock this up now. This is done. I don't want to mess with this any longer. I just want to control which frame it sits on. So I'm just going to put a lock on it right there so I don't have to worry about moving it around, selecting it accidentally. So now I want to make an action, a stop action, on all of these frames so it won't play through them. I want it to stop wherever I tell it to go. I want it to just sit on that frame and play its movie that exists there. So I'm going to go window actions and open it up. So here's my actions. Remember I'm on the first frame ready to go. Now what's cool about animate these days, if you put in an action on a keyframe, it'll automatically make your action layer for you and put the action script into that layer. So you don't have to do anything here. That's all automatic. 
So I can either write my action script if I knew it, or I can use code snippets. So I click right here, code snippets, and it's got all kinds of useful actions. So I open up action script, because I'll be using action script. Timeline navigation, because everything we'll be doing will be navigating the timeline. And I just want to stop action, stop at this frame, great. I double click it, it writes the code, there's a stop action, and a big comment telling you what it's doing. And if you look here now in the timeline, it made the actions layer, just like I said, and it put the first action on the first keyframe. And you'll see that it's got a little A right there, which means there's an action sitting there. There's, a, there's something in the window here. Now I just want to do the same thing on all four of these keyframes of the actions layer. So I have to create a new keyframe, double click my stop action again, and put it now on the second keyframe. Make a third keyframe, double click the stop again, and then make a fourth key fourth keyframe, double click this again. So now I've got four stop actions. If I test my movie now, it should still just stop at the first frame and play that video. So here's the, the test, command uh, enter, and there it is. It's just playing the, the closed video as, as it should. Now I just have to make buttons to say, okay, don't, don't go to frame one, go to frame two and play like the open video, for example. So let's make a button. I'm going to make my button uh, with a pencil. You can use uh, any one of these shapes if you like or um, other tools. I'm just going to use the pencil and draw it so it looks like the palm. So I take my pencil tool and I want to make sure and put this on a new layer. The button should be, every button should have its, their own layer. Use lots of layers. So there, this is going to be the first button layer and I'm going to call this layer, this is going to be the, the, uh, the open layer because that's going to have the open button. So I will draw an area. I think I'll make this red so you can see where I'm drawing. I think I'll make everything red. Just made the, the uh, stroke and the fill both red. And I'm going to draw the area uh, right around my palm right here because that's where I want the open bit to activate, right there. And then I'm going to take my bucket right here and fill that area. So that's going to become my open button. So in order to select this button, I could draw a box around it like that to select it. Or I can even just click on my first frame. That'll automatically select it too. So I want to turn this into a button. Uh, modify, convert to symbol. And make it not a movie clip, but a button. And to keep my head together about what are buttons and what are not in the symbols, I'm going to call this B for button. And I want this to be the open button. So be open. Bopen. That's my open button. Great. There it is. Now it's a symbol. It's a button. Let's code it up. What do we want it to do? We want it to go and stop at frame two and play that, um, uh, play that symbol movie that's there. So I click on it, make sure it's, that's what I'm coding. And I will say here, back in timeline navigation, click to go to frame and stop. I want it to stop on that frame and just play the symbol. So I click to go to frame and stop, double click. It says, I need to turn this button into an instance. And okay, that sounds good to me. It turned it into button one. That's what the instance is called. And it defaults to go to and stop frame five. It always puts that in there. It just tries to give you something to understand what's happening. And, but we really want frame two. So I'm going to click on frame five, delete it, and put frame two in there. So it goes to frame two. So let's see what we got. Um, hit command enter. Let's see what movie we've got. We've got this big red button. If I click it, it opens my hand. That's exactly what I want to happen. Good. So now I want to perhaps get back to the part where it will close my hand. And we'll make these buttons go invisible in just a minute. We're, we're going to keep them visible for the moment. So I'm going to make now a new button at the wrist that's going to go back to the first frame again, which is the closed movie. So again, I'll make a new layer, 
call this the close layer. That's going to contain the close button. And then I'm going to take my pencil again and draw an area right around my wrist where I want this button to live. And then fill it in with my bucket. Kaboink. I'm going to select that button. Uh, I think I'll just do it by cl clicking on the keyframe here, which will select it, of the closed layer. Uh, in fact, I might even want to lock up my open layer since that's finished for now. Um, and I'm going to convert to a symbol. And I'll call this B for button. Uh, and I'll say this is close. This is my close button. Great. It's selected, so I think I'm okay with that. Make sure I'll click on it. And what I wanted to do is to go to the first frame, go back a frame, go to the first frame and stop there, because it'll play then the closed movie again. Go to frame and stop, says it needs to be an instant, sounds good to me. I want it to go to frame one. Let's test it out. Hit command enter. And here's open. And if I click this one now, it goes to the closed movie. So now I can open and close. So I just need to repeat these things now for the thumb and the finger, and then I'll make them go invisible. So let's make the thumb button. I will put a lock on the close layer, so I don't want to accidentally select that. And make a new layer. And draw a button on that layer around my thumb area. There, good enough. I kind of made it into an oval. That's good enough. And fill it in. And I think I'm going to select it. And then I'm, use, I'm going to use my down arrow and my over arrow to sort of position it a little bit better. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And I'll say modify convert to symbol. And this is going to be B for button, thumb. Great. Let's code it up. Make sure we're selected. Great. Go to frame and stop. And I want it to go to frame three, which <clears throat> I hope is where I put my uh, thumb movie. Let's test it out. Thumb. Good. It works. Cool. Let's just do the finger now. We're, we're done with those. Uh, so I'll make a new layer. Now in layer five is that's my thumb movie. I didn't name it. I'll just call it thumb. Let's keep this consistent here. Uh, new layer, layer six, and I will call that finger. And I'll lock up my thumb one. And I'm going to now make a finger movie button by again going to my pencil tool and drawing an area around where the finger is and make it even a little bit bigger. Whoa, I made a box. Yeah, I guess that's cool. You can uh, change your pencil mode. It doesn't have to be quite so straightening. In fact, maybe I'll do that. I'm going to command Z this. Um, I'll make this smoothing instead of straightening. And now when I draw, it won't turn it into a box. I'll just keep its shape but just smooth it out. There we go, much better. And then I'm going to paint bucket that area. Select it by selecting the keyframe. There, it selected it. Great. And modify, convert to symbol, button, and call it deeper button, finger. I know what's going on. Let's code this baby up. Click on it. I don't even know if you need to click on it, but I just do it anyway. Uh, go to frame and stop. And we want to go to frame four. Command enter, let's test it out. Finger, it works. Thumb, it works. Open, it works. Wrist, to close, it works. Great, everything's working. The only thing you need to do is make these buttons invisible and I'm finished. So I'm gonna close up my actions, all that's done. All I need to do now is to go into these symbols and make them invisible. So my symbols are the, the B button all these B things are my symbols I need to make invisible. So I'm going to go to B finger. Let's go to the first one. And there it is. So buttons have 
uh, their own little timeline and this up down up over down and hit um, the over is like a rollover so when you roll over it it'll be a, a new image or a new color whatever you like the down is click I would have made that word click so that you'd know that what that is and then hit is the area of activation right I would have made that word area not hit so it really should be up over click and area that would make more sense so we don't have anything on these frames here which means that if I was to um, I can't even scroll this over to that frame but if I could this would disappear so there is no hit area if there is no hit area it will assume that you want it to be whatever you've drawn to be the hit area but what we want to do is we want to make a hit area exist here on the hit frame so I'll just make a keyframe which will then copy whatever was on frame one and stick it there. And once I've done that, I've got my area. And now I can delete the actual image itself. I could go back to the up area and hit my delete key. And all I have now is just the hit area. There is no, there's nothing visible that's going to be there because there's no, nothing in my up. When I'm up, up means you're just, uh, your mouse is somewhere else. And so it'll be invisible. And so what will happen is when we go to scene one, it just shows you that it does have an activation area, but there's nothing that will be visible there when we play the movie. In fact, I'll show you, I'm going to hit command enter again to do a test movie and there's nothing over that finger anymore, but it's still a button. It still works. There's just nothing visible that you can see. So I made it go invisible. I just have to do the exact same thing to the other um, buttons. So here's B thumb. That's the area of the up that we can see. I'm going to add a keyframe to the hit area, which is the area of activation. Insert a keyframe, go back to the up and delete so that there's nothing there. I'll do the same thing to the closed. Create a keyframe, go back to the up area and delete it. And then the open, same deal. Keyframe, go to the up area and delete it. Now when I go to scene one, they're all gone. There's just an area to show me that I've got an activation area. When I hit my test movie, we don't see any of the buttons, but they all still are there working. And there you have interactive video. You can imagine the possibilities of what you could create with video that you can interact with. If you want to export your final movie, you export movie, you make sure it's a SWF, Shockwave Flash, a Swift movie. You can name it whatever you like, interactive hand, perhaps. If you want to continue to work on this later, you want to save your flash file. In other words, something that only flash will see and it will keep all your layers and all your, um, you know, everything you've done so you can continue to edit. And that's going to just going to be a save as, and that will be an animate document dot FLA, which is flash. And so you can save that. Um, maybe I'll call this, you know, I hand or something on my desktop. And so now I've got two different file types. One, if I want to continue to work on it, and one, the Swift movie, I can have that as a standalone. It'll just play if I have a flash player, or I can even embed it in a web page. So that's it. That concludes this interactive video.